What is going on everybody? Welcome to a very nerdy look at gravel handlebars. Now I've become really interested in gravel handlebars recently because I've been riding a ton of gravel and I've been testing a lot of bars generally over the last couple of years. The interesting thing about gravel handlebars is that there is a massive range of options and there's all kind of good and bad points about all of them. So really it's just about discovering what it is that you need, what it is that you're looking to do and choosing the right bar that fits that. Couple of things before we start, big shout out to Jason from gravelcyclist.com for giving me some of the footage of me actually riding on some of the bars. If you have not been to gravelcyclist.com or the Gravel Cyclist YouTube, and Instagram accounts, they are fantastic. Big shout out again to Jason. We actually are from the same city, although he now lives in Gainesville, Florida, but we catch up when he comes over and we ride some sweet gravel, so check him out. The second thing I want you to check out is whatbars.com. Now this is quite an awesome website for comparing and overlaying the different gravel bar options so you can get a sense of how they compare against each other. Great website, love that these tools exist. Thank you to whoever puts it together. So let's do it. The first approach is screw it, just ride road bars. And that's perfectly fine. The man I referred to before, Jason from Gravel Cyclist himself, loves just standard road bars and rides 42 centimeter Ritchie WCS. No flare, no sweep, nothing. The good thing about just going with road bars is you have the world of choice. One that is sort of a bit of a weird hybrid bar that's like road, but on the cusp of gravel is these 3T Super Gear, yeah, yeah, yeah. The impossibly named 3T handlebar that I tested on a Moots Root a couple of years ago. What I loved about them is that they were very narrow and they only flared down below where the shifters mount. So you got the vertical shifters and then you got the flare beneath them. I love the control you get from them and they were just really comfortable while keeping you fairly narrow. I'm a pretty narrow guy so I got along with those quite well. Now the reason you wouldn't want to choose sort of standard road bars is that there's not a lot of real estate going on there. It's going to be hard to fit a bar bag for your lights, for your computer mount, all the other sort of nonsense that you tend to whack on your bike when you go for a ride. Also you are missing out on some of the added control that you get from the width and the flare of gravel handlebars but some people don't need them. The second category is your sort of bog standard gravel bars and nowadays they are defined by a few things. The standard width is something in the region of 44 to 46 centimeters. They have a moderate flare of about 12 degrees and sometimes a bit of a back sweep towards you. I've actually been riding around on a couple of bars that fall into this category. The first is the Pro Discover Medium Flare. Now I've been using these on a new review bike that I've got in from Bossy Bicycles, an Australian titanium brand. I have them in the 44 centimeter width and they have a very nice and sort of subtle flair to them. They're a great bar for someone who is just sort of looking to transition gradually from road bars to gravel bars. They're not too extreme. They also have a nice sort of ergonomic top on them, which puts your wrists in quite a nice position. It forces your wrists to be a little bit bent, which keeps them relaxed. And they're actually quite cheap as well. So that's a great option for people who are looking for sort of under a hundred Australian dollars. Another bar in this category that I've been a big fan of is the Ritchie Ergomax Comp. They came on the Grove RAD that I reviewed a little while Ago. Not only do they have that flare, they have raised tops. And I was initially a bit indifferent towards the raised tops, but I found that I used them more and more as I got used to it. Again, they're another quite cheap bar. You can get them for around 100 Australian dollars, and I think they're excellent. The drawback that you can get with those is that they're still not really that wide at around 44 to 46 centimeters. So if you're doing a bit of light bike packing on them, which I have done before, it can be a bit inconvenient. You start to lose some of your bar real estate to having to put bags and stuff and straps over the top of them. And that can be a bit annoying. They're an excellent all rounder generally though. So you just got to pick what it is that you want. The last category I'm going to talk about is the completely bonkers handlebars. And these 
these are a lot of fun to talk about. The bar I've been using from this category is the Curve Walners, the claimed widest drop handlebars in the world. Now I have used the second biggest size, second, which is still 55 centimeters wide at the hoods and 70 centimeters wide at the flare. Yeah, I've had mountain bikes with bars that wide. They are massive. They are also completely insane, but also quite awesome. I was pretty skeptical when I got them sent to me by Curve for review. I was like, really? Do I have to put this on the bike? But then I did and I started riding with them and I really came to like them. The first thing you need to keep in mind is that it will radically change the geometry of your bike. It is super wide. So steering becomes pretty awkward if you keep a long stem. So once I dropped from a 110 back to a 90, it really sharpened it up and it started to feel a lot better. Ergonomics are excellent. Curve have done a great job of designing the hand positions on them. There is a fairly dramatic backward sweep on them. The flare is very wide, but it's very shallow. So it's nice to sort of put your hands there and it, it, it is always within reach. And the tops are pretty decent, a little bit narrow for my personal taste, but they're okay overall too. There are a few logistical hurdles to overcome when you have such an insanely wide bar, which I found out when I went to get them fitted. For starters, you may have to fully rehose and recable your bike. You need a huge amount of slack to even be able to use these to begin with. Luckily, the Grove that I put them on did have enough slack just. The mechanic who fitted them did get the brake hose to pop out of the handlebar tape a little bit earlier than the full wrap, so that made it possible to do, but it was pretty touch and go. Now, bar tape can be a bit of a problem as well. Curve does ship bar tape with each set, which is lucky because it's an extra long bar tape and it actually makes it usable. Now, what makes these bars so good is that they are really comfortable. They give you tons of control. When I go around some of the rougher terrain, I like to ride a lot in uh, some, some trail networks around here and the warmers are excellent in those areas. You get a nice wide body position, more similar to how you would be on a mountain bike and it just gives you heaps of control and heaps of confidence. And that's where the warmers really shine. The other reason why you might go completely crazy with bars like this is bike packing. The bars are so friggin' huge that you can fit a bag and everything else you want and still have plenty of room to put your hands. If you have a look at this clip, I've got a handlebar bag. I could fit probably two more on the same set of bars and still have enough room. Now, the reason you might not want to go with a bar like this is the aforementioned problems of getting them fitted. Also, I found that the ergonomics of the SRAM shifters are not very good when you angle them as extremely as you have to for the Walmer bars. And finally, you do need to ride with your wits about you because suddenly you are a lot wider than you were before. I do occasionally commute on the bike with those handlebars and yeah, I get pretty damn close to uh, rear view mirrors quite a lot. So got to keep that in mind. There are a few other brands that make really crazy bonkers wide handlebars as well. There is the Crust Bikes Towel Rack and there is of course the legendary bars from Salsa, the Cow Chipper and the Wood Chipper. People who are doing crazy ass bike packing and sort of more extreme drop bar riding should definitely look into these bars. They're crazy, but they kind of work and they make sense as long as you're riding them in the right context. And that is probably more than enough talk about gravel handlebars for one video. I hope you managed to find some good advice in here and find your way towards some handlebars that you would actually want to use when you're gravel biking. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that stuff. It really helps me out and I appreciate it. And I will see you next time.